Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kyle Compare, and I'm a hydrogeology student. And what my research focuses on is quantifying the exchange rate between groundwater within the surficial aquifer system and surficial water bodies such as ponds. Essentially, you can think of me as a plumber for the Earth. And while that might not be the most glamorous of titles, it's pretty true as it's my job to understand the mechanics and methods that water flows in the pipework underneath the ground. Now, it's relatively easy to think of a pond like a kitchen sink, as they're both basins which hold water. But ponds are actually really dynamic and interesting systems. You have water coming in through stream flow and precipitation and evaporating out. But there's also this continuous exchange of groundwater flowing in and out of the sides of a pond through a process called groundwater seepage. And the seepage is very important in controlling the water level within ponds, which will be important later. Now, I'll ask the question, how do you measure this unseen, continuous exchange of groundwater into and out of ponds? Groundwater and pond water looks remarkably similar. It's all just water, really. Well, traditionally, they use something called a seepage meter, which is composed of a large barrel inserted into the lake bed sediment. And there is a bag on top in order to capture any water that is seeping into the lake. And you're able to measure groundwater seepage. However, this system is very large. There's a large footprint, and it can disturb environmentally sensitive lake systems. It takes a very large time in order to collect a single measurement. And in the systems that we're looking at, where there's very slow seepage rates, it's relatively inaccurate. And thus, we would like to improve upon this system. So we're developing a new seepage meter. It improves upon the old one by being completely automated. It runs on solar power. It, um, it has a much smaller footprint, so it'll be less environmentally harmful, as well as uh, we, we have used, we're using this very high resolution water level sensor, which can detect even the smallest of seepage rates. How this works is we couple the fundamental law of hydrogeology and combine it with this sensor, which has yet to be used in groundwater studies. So hopefully, uh, we'll get some good results from this. We're currently testing this in the lab in this simulated lake in a bucket, and we're preparing to move on to field studies in the Apalachicola National Forest south of Tallahassee. Now, I hope this to be, I want this to be the first of many seepage studies. Uh, you'll note, such as understanding the groundwater dynamics, controlling the wetting and drying cycles of ponds within this fo the National Forest. Here you'll see the same pond in the wet and dry season, um, reduced to quite a puddle in the dry season. And while ponds, this might be a little sad if you like ponds, it's very important because uh, this drying prevents predatory fish from living in these ponds, and it becomes a safe haven as a breeding ground for endangered species like this little guy, the striped newt. On top of this, I'd be really curious as to how gr groundwater dynamics will change with a claim changing climate and how this will affect the uh, cyclical nature of these drying periods. Currently, we're working with FSU's patent office to obtain a patent for this device, and I have really high hopes that this will change the way that we, as academics, as well as environmental regulation agencies, study groundwater flow in the environment. Thank you.